So my conclusion, um, as I said, is as, as also the whole paper was written from an, um, a YK platform. And this will be, I think, even more clear now. The central concept is duration, and all other concepts, Elan Vital and, and uh, Instinct, and whatever, memory, are derived from that. The second point, in contrast to the traditions of either rationalism and empiricism, the concept of duration was derived from the analysis of the continuum of human experience and not from the atomistic analysis of clear and distinct units, whether concepts or conceptions. A very well Hegelian point. The third point. The main characteristic of duration is that it determines its own essence. Therefore, it is not comprehensible in terms of substance ontology. Bergson introduces a process ontology which with important similarities to Whitehead's process metaphysics. Next point, durational processes are individuals yeah, with hyphen. It's, it's not possible to, to divide them. They are indivisible because they are not quantifiable during their own self-determination. This is the idea of the heterogeneous continuity. The next point, there is an inconceivable number of individuals or durational processes in the Bergsonian universe. This is the moment of ontological pluralism. All durational processes from God up to the most primitive quantum process are exemplifications of the same ontological concept. And this is the moment of the ontological moments. They are all durations. Now I would like to come to some points. Um, so here, in these three points, I see a significant difference between Bergson and Whitehead. For Whitehead, material processes are intrinsically limited in spatial are intrinsically limited in spatial extension. They, they limit themselves in the space. Whereas for Bergson, the apparent localization is the result of the human perspective. We do that because we want to, 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 to uh, act on matter. The second point. In Bergson's system, the world emanates from God, whereas for, for Whitehead, the world and God are co-evolving processes. It is possible, even in the Bergsonian system, to understand them as co-evolving processes, but it's, it's, it's probably implicit in the system. It's not, it's not explicit. Another main difference between Bergson's and Whitehead's philosophy concerns the ontological status of universals. I didn't say anything about this, but I have to say it now. Whitehead considers universals to be real, whereas Bergson is neither a realist nor a nominalist. Um, and this has to do with the conception of Dewey, of course, why he does have universals. Thank you for your attention. Five minutes for uh, questions and discussion. Um, yeah, so in, in Plotinus and a lot of these other ones, you see a kind of hierarchizing of um, the sort of divine emanation and how it, you know, uh, manifests on different levels. I'm wondering if you sort of see string theory as um, a kind of new way of doing that, or um, thoughts of how that relates to process philosophy? Process kind of thing? I'm not very good familiar with string theory. Yeah, me neither. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a little, a little, a little um, skeptic about, um, no, I should say I'm a little careful about um, the connection of, of string theory with Whitehead's or Bergson's, in general with scientific uh, uh, concepts, because 
There, there are constructions. Of course, these things are also constructions, but they are metaphysical constructions. And uh, this is quantum theory and, and, and strings theory are constructions that are based on some abstractions that are maybe different than this here. So I don't, maybe they are different. So I don't know if, if, if uh, I have never um, heard something about the proto-mentality of string, of string, of strings. So it, of course we can do that, but it's not what physicists do. And I think also that the, this, um, the, 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 um, uh, uh, this big, huge masses in CERN in, in Europe, for example, in, in, in the, you know what I mean, the, the big accelerator with the Higgs particle and God particles and all these things. I'm, I'm a little skeptic. I think that they create uh, uh, realities. And then they think that what they, they, they see that this is objective. Mm -hmm. So this is, a, I have a, a, a somewhat constructivistic view uh, concerning the, the inner aspect of, of, of uh, modern physics. Not of all physics, but especially of this, of, of uh, high energy physics. Also the computers create uh, somehow a reality. And, um, but anyway, it, it, it is possible to, 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 to make connections and some quantum physicists have done it. Um, Penrose, for example, has done it. Henry Stark has done it, but not necessarily for quantum strings. The question was, uh, sorry, the question was about uh, plot time in quantum strings. I think I cannot say anything. Right, yeah, I guess I was, I was more um, thinking of, you know, Plotinus talking about um, this this emanation as being um, the kind of harmony that you know through through a circuit all energy is able to be sort of moved around mm -hmm. um, and the harmony I guess was sort of what I was looking at with the, the string theory and all connected but I think that your answer was really helpful. I don't know. <laughs> it was really helpful. Um, well, in terms of construction. Yeah. Um, in this picture that I had here, it is of course extremely constructed and it can be very misleading if you don't uh, have understood very well what Kurtzon says. Um, if quantum strings are, are somewhere here or in these levels, I don't know how, how, what is the temporality of them. Maybe Professor Swim knows that. Um, the idea of emanation leaves, I would say, for this idea is essential that you have long living processes. The emanation, I mean the emanation of, of blood type, the emanation of per, the, the idea of Ferdinand Vital of Bergson. You need to have um, very different levels of, of, of the lifespan. So you would need to have processes that, that, that uh, have a, 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 a lifespan of billions of years. And I don't know what, what kind of physical entities would they be, fields or whatever. I have no idea. I would love to hear you talk about it with this with this this image. Um, you said something that was really interesting, and I was trying to write it down, but you said you'd return to it maybe later. It was about the intensities and how they they're they're, they're different and the tensions. The tensions, yes, and the, the durations. Yes. And I'd love to hear you speak a little more about that. Yeah. Um, so tension is is. Um, Bergson uses, uses um, the concept of tension and the concept of extension. The concept of tension refer because uh, is, is a temporal, a temporal concept. The concept of an extension is a spatial. And he makes in the English translation uh, a differentiation between extension and being over extensive and being extended. So extended has another meaning that extensive and extension. But your question was about tension, but I would li love to speak also about extension, Great. if it's possible. Yeah. So tension is the concept that he uses in order to, to close the gap between consciousness and matter. And 
and tension is the ability of a proto-mental or a mental process, a process that, that, that um, can be characterized only as a heterogeneous continuum, the process that determines its essence, its nature, its being, what it is, like an actual location, I would say. So this process has the ability to prolong its life. It drops itself in the future, if, 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 if I may use Heideggerian, Heideggerian language. Bergson does say that very much because in his philosophy he, he, he emphasizes the connection of present to the past <coughs> as, as, a, as an indivisible um, credible continuum. Heidegger um, and Husserl also did the, 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 the extended his theory uh, to the future in order to include the future. And this ability of prolonging the life, uh, of, of, of going on, of, of creating this continuum is what he means by, by, by tension. And then you talk about different levels. Yes, so a this, proton this, yeah, has the yeah. ability to, to yeah. propagate into the future. Yeah. So does a bacterium. And bacterium? Uh, no. Bacterium. I mean, in other words, a, a palm tree. They all have the ability to propagate into the future. Mm. They have this. They have this. Exactly. Picture they are durations. Mm -hmm. Durations, but uh, so then, can you talk about different levels? Yeah, you mean in, in the same organism, or Possibly. in this past, in this picture? Yes, these are the different levels here. Uh, I have used colors. These are the colors of the spectrum, from blue to, to red, and um, mm -hmm. the first level is what he calls the living eternity, and. The other levels emanate from it. Does he, I mean, he does explain. He does explain the mechanism. Of this. He does have a theory of prehension and, and, and things like that. He is a, a very metaphoric in, 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 in creative evolution. It was written 1907. It's over than 20 years before Whitehead's process in reality. Um, and. He says there that, that um, there is a continuum between the, 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 the um, heterogeneous continuity of God, which is a whole process without past, present, and future. It is, it is in the Greek language, we would say a mean. I don't know if you know this, this if you have this word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The presence, the feeling of presence, there is no distance. If I remember my, my, my childhood, there is a feeling of distance. In this sense, God does not remember anything. For him, is everything present. In, in, is everything present in, 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 in its presence, so to say. There is no distance. But this is typical only for the highest tension, for the highest level of duration. The, um, this ability of, to, to use a, a James or species present, this ability of having a species present, an extended duration, is something that all durations have, but, to the, in, but, but, but not to the same degree. And these are the different levels. So if, if the higher is the tension, uh, this means the long living, the more, the more long living is, of course. And this means for him it's more creative. It's a more creative, a more rich process. So the material processes that are very short-lived durations are less creative. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he calls them, no, he doesn't call them proto-mental, but, but they can be pro call, called proto-mental. So many, many, many process philosophers have identified uh, Bergson's philosophy as a pan-experientialist mm -hmm. uh, philosophy. Because it follows on, on that. First of all, thank you. It's very, very stimulating. Uh, um, um, I was struck by uh, Bergson's Bergson's uh, mm -hmm. uh, use of the term, term superconscious in this context. Uh, I couldn't help but think of Sri Aurobindo. Uh, 
who in the, the, the last chapter of his um, book on, on yoga uh, is called Towards uh, the Towards the Supra Mental uh, Time Consciousness. Supra mental. Supra mental time consciousness. I, I, time consciousness, yeah. Uh, and of course he was he was writing out of his own experience, his own yoga. Uh, and um, he has a very explicit ontology of, of infinite grades of uh, um, complexity, subtlety, and so on. Um, but he, so Bergson, the way you're describing it, Bergson seems to have what, what Shurabindo would call you know, Brahman or, uh, or the, the supermind, the absolute, on one end. Uh, and uh, for Bergson, uh, for, for Orbindo, the lowest, the, the, the lowest emanation uh, is, uh, uh, is what he calls the inconscient which is, I mean, we need to get into that. But um, I'm wondering if, <clears throat> presumably, there, if there's a spectrum, there must be something intermediate between uh, a human consciousness, let's say, a human actual occasion and its, its life on the one hand, and uh, God or the absolute on the other. You can imagine. And for that being, presumably, for a being that would, that would stands, let's say, midway between the living eternity of the Godhead on the one hand and uh, an average human experience of life on the other. From the perspective of this higher order being, one could imagine, or could one imagine, should, can, should we not even imagine, according to this logic, <coughs> that um, uh, what to an ordinary human life is uh, future would be part could be part of this higher order organization uh, of their present. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Uh, so, uh, okay. So Shurabindo talks about this experience of the memory of the future. For instance. Now, this is also a, 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 seems to be a really big uh, point of contention between most interpreters of Whitehead and this line of thinking, uh, most interpreters of Whitehead that I've come across uh, have a uh, strong allergic reaction uh, to any suggestion that what we normally think of as the future can, from a higher order of complexity, the perspective of a higher order of complexity, be experienced as uh, present. Can you comment on this? Yes, so at least two questions. Or, yeah, uh, yeah, there's there's or, a thousand more <coughs> yeah, behind yeah. those two that I want. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bergson does make it very explicit. He can say anything about uh, I I don't remember that he says anything about um the the levels between human and my point of view, and I have done, I have written something about this, but it is still not published and it was in German. Um, I think that, that um, an organism has a higher duration than only what we observe. Sorry, that, that only what? An organism has a higher duration yes. than the duration or the lifespan that we observe. Okay. So I, it can be something, it could be, it could be, um, uh, labeled as um, super individual or, or um, so let, let me think a little about this. Um, how to say it in English? Um, super individual uh, organism or something like that. It's Bergson doesn't do that. Okay. But if we look back in the in the in the um, uh, ancient philosophy, and uh, for example, um, in the Neoplatonic, Neoplatonic, Neoplatonic um, tradition, we know that um, the so-called pseudo pseudo Dionysius Areopagita, who was a scholar of Proclus, who was a scholar of Plotine, mm -hmm. had a theory of emanation, mm -hmm. and this 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 were the, the beings between God and human. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nine levels. 
this might be an answer, I don't know. But the problem is, of course, um, who is asking? I mean, you are asking now, and I can give you this answer. Um, if, if it's, it's not possible to, to give this answer to a scientific uh, conference, for example. Uh, it's not completely impossible. So the question is, um, it's easier if uh, you ask about um, the durational levels of an organism, even of a bacteria. And I think that, that also quantum theory can help us. Yeah, because we know now that there are um, microscopic quantum events in, in, in cells. There is some evidence about this. Some papers were published. Uh, a group in Berkeley did that some years ago. Um, they published papers about um, long-living and extensed, extended or extensive with, with, with Bergson's words, words uh, quantum events in organisms, microscopic or mesoscopic quantum events. And in this case, you can have, you can have um, lifespans that are longer than those of electrons and protons, for example. I'm thinking in, in um, um, something like actual locations, in actual locations. But for me, actual locations have duration. Okay, I'll follow up on, on uh, part of, of Sean's question, I think, about uh, at least in a, a Whiteheadian metaphysics, uh, the ultimate principle being creativity, that would limit the extent to which even uh, the consciousness of God could predict the future because um, there would be no memory of the future in a Whiteheadian no. um, context, right, because of its creativity. And what I'm wondering is, uh, before you concluded, I was going to ask if, if, if the comparison between Bergson and Plotinus, uh, as regards this theory of emanation, would also, uh, if you also look at Whitehead in that way, and I've seen attempts to, to characterize Whitehead's approach as emanationist, but I don't think they work, both, you know, partly for this reason about creativity, the future being radically open and, and completely uh, undetermined, um, but also because um, whereas in, in this in a, a system of animation like this, you have um, you know you start with the one beyond being, and then it sort of gets stepped down. Yeah. So you start with the most perfect, and then slowly steps down to these various levels until you get to matter, which I think Plotinus described as it's basically nothing. Or it has no self-existence. It's 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 just like the, um, the it's what's the residue that's left up over after the process of emanation. Right? Um, whereas with Whitehead, there's no um, there's no hierarchy like that. It doesn't seem to me. It seems like creativity, it, as his ultimate principle, is uh, he says that it's conditioned by its own creatures. Right. So. Mm -hmm. It's in some sense neither just one or many. It's kind of those, the categories of one and many kind of right. get lost in that concept of creativity. Uh, and God, for Whitehead, becomes a creature, mm -hmm. which is is a very strange theological notion. That, um, um, I, I, I can't think of another example of that idea. But I'm wondering, you know, maybe which which position either the emanationist or the Whiteheadian idea of, of creativity and the co-evolution of God in the world, which do you think is more viable um, as a metaphysical option, given what you know scientifically and given your own philosophical perspective? Which which one do you tend to... Uh, well, I think that, that it's with. possible to combine um, a Bergsonian and theory of emanation with, with Whitehead's concept of God. But what we need here in this case is a theory of prehension between um, durations or between processes of different levels. Mm -hmm. Bergson doesn't have it. So the emanation, I mean, if, if, if you consider again this, this example, this level, this, this vessel with steam, there is a crack 
it sounds like an accident. Um, what we need is is to have um, to create a theory that makes out that that that, that um, how do I say it? Um, integrates this emanation into the logic of the process of, of the type of this living intensity. So it has to be something essential. Mm -hmm. The emanation has to be something ex essential for the the, the, uh, the process which is called living eternity, yeah. for the highest process. In Whitehead's philosophy, the relation between God and, 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 and the world is essential. It's not accidental. Because, as you know, you said we have the category of the one and the many. And the process, in the process, many become one. Becomes one. There is not the one in the beginning. Right. Yeah. And here you can get the, 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 the impression that this blue line could exist without the other lines. Yeah. Um, in another book, in his last book, The Two Sources of, of uh, Morality and Religion, was written in 1932. Um, he becomes more theological in the Catholic, in the Catholic Christian Catholic uh, sense. He talks about love. He so to say that God uh, is essential for God to love something, and th therefore the world. But it's a very Christian answer, and I am not very satisfied with this kind of answer. As a philosopher, I need something that turns this, this process of emanation to something int intrinsical of the source of emanation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're not satisfied with Whitehead's position where, where God is an accident of creativity? Right? It, it, no, I didn't. I, accident, I uh, you have the philosophic concept of accident. Uh -huh. No, I, I was talking about the Bergson's metaphor. Right, right. Accident like uh, this crack in the vessel. You know, right. it's 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 uh, meant to be that way. Why is the crack yeah. there? Yeah. He doesn't explain why it's there. Why is it necessary? Why does it belong to the process right. to emanate? You know. So um, I I was not talking about the white. Right, right. Yeah, I got so, that. I was asking though if if in, in Whitehead's metaphysics, um, I can't remember where he writes this. It might be in process of reality. He says that. Oh no, it's in Science in the Modern World. Mm -hmm. um, where he, he says that he brings God into his metaphysics uh, in, in such a way that you know, he can't really explain why yeah. creativity gave why it rise to God. He, he thinks it's the, the reason that we need to bring God talk into this is for empirical reasons, ultimately. Um, that, and and he, he connects you know, God and the world are essential to one another, for sure. Um, but. As an empiricist, Whitehead argues, I think, that um, the foundation of rationality is, is in this just the, the sheer fact that there is a world or that there is religious experience of what we call God. That, that's the foundation of, of any reason or rationality in the first place. And that he can't really give an account of why there should be a world or a God out of just the creative flux. Um, because there's there's no reason, there's no rationality at that level. So Maybe not in the science of the modern world, mm -hmm. but I think in process and reality, the system becomes more closed, uh -huh. more consistent. Um, so what kind of reason? Because, because, yeah, because I mean, he needs the idea of God. Mm -hmm. It's the principle or the force that, that uh, brings continuity in the world, right. spatial and time and temporal. And also, it makes um, developments of processes, of temporary processes, possible because it has the eternal absence. Mm -hmm. Possibility, the real, or not, the, the pure possibilities. Right. And you cannot have them without God, he thinks. Mm -hmm. Because not all um, possible things are realized in the world. So, novelty has to come from somewhere mm -hmm. outside of what is realized, what is actualized. And therefore, he needs, I think, um, God. Um, 
Um, was the of your question now? So, so you no, know, you were talking about this this problem in, in, in science in the modern world that it sounds a little accidental. So in, in, in process and reality, I think that the logic of the process um, uh, gives an answer that, that um, processes do not exist in themselves. They, they are prehensive. They have to be connected. They have to be internal relations. And otherwise, you don't have processes. And I think this, this um, gives an answer to the relation between God God and the world. But you have also to um, focus on reality, on actuality. Mm -hmm. That things are realized or are permanently are realized that we are not there. Yeah. So but it's not possible I think to, to, to make a theory out of this. So you have to take something out of the experience how things are. Yeah. yeah, I guess my question has to do with the priority of experience mm. over against theory, maybe. Yeah. But um, yeah, you gave me a lot to think about there, so maybe we can... And of course, another question is the relation between why it's God and creativity. Right. This is because the creativity is the universal of the universals. Yeah. This means if it's the universal of the universals, you don't have concepts to describe it. There is nothing more universal in the sky. I can follow, I think, close to where you've been. Um, <clears throat> so I was very pleased by your presentation on Bergson. I was a little bit restless in some of the comparisons. So I wonder if you'd be willing to revisit at least two of them. Anyway, um, one uh, with Plotinus. The, of course, the emanation is comparable, but to my mind, the one in Plotinus uh, renders the emanation uh, subordinate. I mean, he is a monist. The one is the ultimate reality, and the emanation is begging for some reality within that. And so that's quite a different um, um, feel, a moral feel. So the different sort of emphases from uh, Bergson. So I was a little bit restless in, in that part. And then with uh, Whitehead, I was restless again because um, you didn't uh, mention in the talk or in this exchange uh, with Matt about the, comp the uh, primordial nature of God, yeah. which is, I think would have a hard time, um, we would have a hard time placing that into Bergson because he has, seems to be um, uh, proceeds without such a uh, an affirmation that's very important to Whitehead's platonic soul and not at all uh, important to Bergson, the biologist. Uh, and even in the third chapter of the two sources, where he's writing out of experience, he's not really theological at all. He doesn't really uh, develop the concept of God. He develops a, an appreciation of uh, great uh, um, prophetic figures uh, who are advancing life, but not making the kind of statement that you would find in uh, Plotinus or even in Whitehead. So this brings me, I guess, to the point that I wanted to make, namely that uh, after hearing your account of Bergson, I come away again convinced that Bergson's real Pal, philosophical pal, is James, uh, who doesn't have a, uh, a Plotinian God, doesn't have a uh, Whiteheadian God, doesn't, may not have a God at all, it's not so clear, but he has lots of emanation, and I think he fin they both finish uh, unresolved about, uh, or rather, uh, consistently avoiding anything that would land them in substance. And, and so I think I'm wondering what you make of that uh, comparison, which didn't come through in your talk, and now I want you to say something about it. Yeah, thank you. Um, in the initial version of my talk, I had more about the uh -huh. difference between Bergson and Plotin, uh -huh. and also Bergson and Whitehead, but it would take us over 
one and a half hour. No, we can't do so that. It's, it was not possible. Um, difference between, between uh, plot lines and Bergson's uh, idea of emanation or the idea of God is um, the architecture of the systems. Uh, plot time is in the Platonic tradition, it's in the rationalistic tradition. So the beginning, the, the highest principle has to be something like the most general concept, the one or the good, or something like that. And everything follows that out of this. And the more away you are from this, the more the more imperfect. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a totally different logic than the than the Whitehead, than the person right. So the, um, this is what I said in my conclusion that that he is not a rationalist and not an empiricist person in the classical sense. Um, the, 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 this living eternity that we have here, the blue line, is, has not the unity of a concept, like the good or the one or whatever. And if we want to understand it, we have to, to focus on our own experience, our own experience of the self as, as uh, creating itself, so to say. This is the idea of duration. This is a process that creates itself, and the only way to, 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 to come closer to it is not by using concepts, but by paying attention to your own experience. This is how he introduces the concept of duration and time and free will. Mm -hmm. He does refer to concepts, and he does even refer to clear and distinct um, experiences. He accuses the classical empiricists that they begin with very clear and distinct experiences. We have to begin with diffuse experiences, with very vague experiences. This is this is his, his so-called radical empiricism. And everything, everything, I mean the idea of duration is based on this concept, on this, on this, on this radical empiricism. Everything follows. So also the idea of the living eternity. And this is, of course, totally different than Platonic or Plotinic uh, idea. Um, therefore, for me, it's more the idea of the emanation, of the transformation of something. Because also Bergson says that um, it is not God that is transformed. It is something that comes from God. And this is a point, this is which, which is essential for, Plot uh, for Plotinism, or for Plotinic emanation. They have the picture of the sun and the light. So it's not God that is that falls to matter, but something that emanates from it. I don't know how, how, how else to describe. Aporia is the Greek word. It means it flo flows out of it. Um, and this is also something that, 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 that uh, Bergson says. It, it makes it very clear in, in in clipping creative evolution, he says that the living eternity is not exhausted, or the, 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 the highest duration, the God is not exhausted by this process. So you cannot you cannot think of, of this process as an energy that is transformed into other energies and, 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 and uh, has a certain quantity. This is not the case. Um, and he has this from Plotinus, from Plotinus, this idea. By the way, uh, Plotinus is the philosopher uh, to which work Bergson had paid the most attention in his uh, lectures in, uh, I think, Col uh, Normal, in a famous school in, in, in France. He, uh, if you look at his, his um, um, lectures, to the students, he, his work on Plotin is much more than his work on Aristotle, Platon, and other Greek philosophers altogether. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you 
I just wanted to draw you out, and um, you're drawn. <laughs> I think you fit as close to James, but that's fine. Yeah, of course. Because, uh, I mean, the, um, the, um, uh, how is it, is, what's the title of this, this book of James? Um, Pluralistic Universe. This is, I would say, it's a broad process philosophical book. And it's against the idea of substance. And uh, as James wrote this book, he had a very close connection to Bergson. So, um, uh, I have more substantial questions, but I'll ask it very simply. Um, as you were talking, I was wondering how one can uh, uh, sort of speak of a theory of fallibility. Of fallibility. Of fallibility. Fallibility. As in that one could get things wrong or right, mm -hmm. right? Uh -huh. in that sense, in terms of uh, duration, right? So if duration is creativity, mm -hmm. how can it account for the fact that uh, 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 I could claim that this is not so, right? So, so say, how does abs you know, abstract time of physics right, um, accounted for within this emanationist process? That, that it is not so. Say, you know, if I insist on being a Newtonian and say, no, this is not so, right? How does it account for, you know, fallibility, contingency within uh, the sort of necessary process, right? So, you know, contingency itself, uh, itself then would have to be a, you know, necessary existence within, within the process of all created existences. Right? So, does he n not have a, uh, theory of fallibility within duration. That's a good question. Um, I, I don't think that he has it explicit. He has a, a theory of fallibility. That, that the process of duration can fail. But he knows, of, he has it in creative evolution, he has it about the instinct, for example, that the instinct of, of, of animals can fail. So I wasn't necessarily talking about duration failing, but duration itself, if it, if it creates everything and everything comes from it, then yeah. How does contingency itself, like the fact that it could be seen as not so, <laughs> happen within it? Oh, right. So, do you mean maybe uh, how is it possible that we have a multiplicity in the world, that we have uh, yeah. uh, contradictions, that we have uh, uh, right. fights and whatever? Is this what you mean? The, the question of the evil? Maybe. I wouldn't quite stretch things that far. You know, asking a very elemental question like, uh, 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 you know, uh, if if I have to be taught this at all, and I do since I don't really know the song, right? Uh, uh, how is it possible that this would be true, and then I don't know that this is true, this is your and then I have to be taught about it? Right? Oh, this is your question. Or, okay. and then after yeah. I hear you talk, I insist on being being a Newtonian saying that abstract time and abstract space is real and that's and that's what God is to me, you know. Mm -hmm. For instance, how would how would the the necessary creation of the existence of the fact that I can say that explainable by duration? Right? So you know one could say that duration then could have, you know, yeah. a creative self blocking of its own realization. I don't know. So First, yeah. uh, maybe we should begin with uh, the Newtonian time. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I have this picture somewhere. This year. So, mm. he said there that, that um, he says it in different parts of his work, I think, especially in matter and memory, that um, material processes have also duration. But they are very short, short lived. Okay? And the succession of them, the succession of these processes, 
can be seen as something that, that on which you can you can you can apply mathematical operations. You can add them, so to say. You cannot add something inside the duration because you have this this heterogeneous continuum. Okay. But if you have many of these processes, one after the other, you can add them and you can get this continuum. Okay, this extensive continuum, so to say. Um, I don't know if it answers your question. So uh, the the other point would be why it was why if um, um, maybe I have to simplify it. Why uh, do, uh, did, did did humans believe for many centuries in the simple theories of time? Is this what you mean? Why do we have do we have the Newtonian concept of time and not from the very beginning the, the, the Bergsonian concept of time? You could say that. Yeah, okay. So I think Bergson's answer is that we have to survive in the world. We have to it's a pragmatistic answer. He was very influenced by pragmatism. So if if there are material processes in the world, if we have to survive in the world, if we have to be practical, if we have to do something, yeah, to do work, for example, then we cannot live in, the, in this modus of, of duration. The modus of duration in which we experience the duration is something that requires that you, that you have a specific state of consciousness. And this is not supportive. This is not supportive for surviving. So our Newtonian time, Newtonian concept of time, and Newtonian concept of space, are um, have been created in order to to make survival possible. They are practical concepts, so to say. But is this an illusion? Well, according to according to the theory of emanation here, is that just simply an illusion? Or to ask it in a more paradoxical way, does the illusion have a reality, or is it a non-reality? It's, it's not a total illusion, mm -hmm. because uh, according to his theory, material processes have duration, but they are they are not like our duration. So the, the order of matter, how matter, how material processes are, okay, this makes possible to have a Newtonian concept. <clears throat> but the inorganic matter is not everything. It's not it's not all there is. So if you have if you if you um, um, have to do with inorganic processes, with machines, with with uh, whatever, then Newtonian time or mathematical abstract concepts of time are um, you can use them. They, 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 in this case, in this case, they make sense. But if you have to do with life, with organisms, for example, or with psychological time, the, the time experience of humans, then it's um, it's not helpful to have a Newtonian concept of time and space. And I have done this experience in my own research um, in systems biology, where we have equ equations, differential equations, which operate with the dt, uh, with this very small, infinitesimal, infinites, inf infinitely short, uh, infinitely short um, time span. And you can see that there are a lot of problems. If you have organisms, not if you have to do with uh, inorganic processes. I want to throw something out here that, that might be helpful. It may be um, uh, Newtonian time isn't an illusion, it's a construction. It was, it was invented at a certain time in history as a kind of a, um, a tool to be used in the physical sciences. Yeah. For a certain kind of measurement, and it works really well. 
all of our technologies are based upon calculus and, and the ability to measure at a very precise, with a very precise degree of accuracy in this way, as if time could be spatialized. But it's a construction. So it's a matter of, like you were saying about high energy physics, they're creating new forms of matter as much as, if not, instead of discovering it in some mm -hmm. sense. So um, Newtonian time isn't an illusion that it's just, it's a, it's a way of constructing or uh, it's a way of abstractly dealing with what is fundamentally a concrete uh, durational process. And so before mechanical clocks and precise measuring instruments, people did experience duration as, as the real, uh, as, as the most real kind of experience rather than clock time. Is that, is that helpful? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you know, I certainly wasn't claiming that you know, Newtonian physics is an illusion. I was just... Oh, uh, yeah. 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 Well, it's not an illusion. Yeah. Because, because um, yeah. Ben Zoff would say, because... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I shouldn't have stolen the last word for myself and then called it to a, an end. But, uh, but you did. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sir. We're training you well. <laughs>